welcome and uh, as you know we've been uh, running this series on uh, feminist thought and the series is called feminist uh, literary texts and uh, we have already uh, delivered a whole team of which i'm a part uh, lectures on the the early feminists in the uh, late 18th and 19th centuries uh, and the 20th century and uh, these days we are covering the uh, feminist thought of the 1960s 70s 80s onwards and uh, today the uh, topic is <coughs> the uh, feminist text of uh, just this person called Kate Millett she wrote a book and uh, that, that 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 book made her famous immediately uh, instantly it was a great instant uh, theoretical success for her so uh, <coughs> kate millet wrote this book called sexual politics and uh, you'd be wondering as to what the phrase means because uh, politics is generally economic and social uh, mainly economic uh, it it uh, you know uh, plays around the uh, economic policies of a country of a nation uh, and uh, of course the nation these days is a part of the globalized world uh, but when it comes to uh, you know uh, uh, sex sex means the the woman the the, the female uh, then you know uh, it assumes politics assumes a new meaning a very challenging meaning because you know uh, till the 1950s people did not associate as clearly as they do now uh, you know uh, feminism or woman with politics which of course does not mean that um, politics did not affect and influence or limited and disciplined their life it also means that uh, thinkers earlier were not sufficiently aware of the presence of uh, the political pressures that worked on women and uh, she is one of the first uh, uh, you know to to uh, use this word uh, you know sexual politics and uh, uh, you'll you'll find in this particular discussion that this politics is invisible as well as quite visible at the same time so uh, <clears throat> this person arkate millet was born uh, i am just going through the uh, basic information about her so uh, so that you can uh, you know uh, place her uh, in the historical context she was born in 1934 and and she died in uh, 2017 so she uh, lived a good uh, mature life uh, of 30 of 83 years and uh, she was a she was an american uh, she was born in minnesota united states and uh, she died in france so you can see her reach that uh, she must be mobile all the time as a scholar as a thinker in europe as well as in america where she was situated so uh, this also <coughs> uh, in a way suggests to her implies also that you know what she says about the american woman or the european woman also would be true uh, about the uh, woman in india and uh, that's why we uh, you know discuss her Uh, in, in in our context and let's see whether she is relevant and to what extent uh the important books uh, i i am not naming all i am mainly naming naming just two books uh, the important books that she wrote were sexual politics that was uh, published in 1970 and the other uh, another book uh, 1994 Uh, came out uh, this book came out in 1994 and uh, between and later she had a large number of other books but they were basically about activism uh, 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 i wonder as to what activism means because generally uh, politics is uh, connected with activism and uh, political parties are uh, you know active in a society uh, you know uh, raising uh, demands raising issues uh, organizing rallies uh, organizing conferences Uh, uh, and, and meetings, and uh, trying to influence the the uh, you know political understanding of the rulers, uh, whosoever they are, uh, who, whosoever they might represent in, in, in the system. So uh, those books I'm, I'm not naming. I'm just naming these two. And uh, the second is politics of cruelty, which of course uh, means that uh, uh, there is a great deal of violence uh, uh, in you know uh, in our treatment of women, in our Uh, and, and and that violence is as i said before visible as well as invisible so these are the two books that i mentioned and uh, i'm taking a particular chapter in fact a few ideas from there to acquaint you with 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 the perspective that she had uh, uh, as early as 1970s but this book you know started influencing uh, social opinion uh, right from its uh, year of publication 
and later on the book disappeared from the scene. Maybe the first uh, edition was sold out, and then people seemed to have lost interest. But she thought uh, she anyway uh, suggested that maybe people didn't find uh, her reviews to their liking, and uh, pressure must have come also on the publishers in America and Europe uh, to you know just just put her on the sides. And uh, a kind of feminism went on and on, and uh, that feminism is quite popular uh, from 1980 onwards. That you know talks about. Ideas talks about perceptions, talks about research, uh, talks about academic discussions, and uh, 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 feminism is these days confined to the classroom, uh, to, to to books, but not to the market, not to the street, not to the life outside the academe, and uh, that's why the word activism is quite important for her and and for us because unless the ideas of women are not taken to the women, and uh, women are. Uh, Uh, you know, include all women uh, in a in a society, in a country, and in the world. Uh, but if the ideas are confined only to the literate, that too in the cities, and that too, you know, where uh, generally there is a, a great amount of resources, so women do not have much to complain about. So uh, ideas that belong to women are kept away from there, generally speaking. And uh, you know, the ways of the publishing world are very subtle. The ways are not open, so so they would not say that they don't don't like her views. They simply say that they are bringing out the book. So sexual politics, another edition, came only very late in life. By that time, uh, you know, she felt very frustrated. She also thought of uh, changing the stream of knowledge, uh, and and uh, then finally she came back to uh, the you know, theory of uh, women uh, again. So uh, this is important, and I thought I should just draw attention to it. A second wave feminist, she is called. What what is first wave feminism and what is second wave feminism? Uh, the, uh, these aspects have been uh, talked about in the uh, earlier lectures uh, by me as well as by the team of which I am a part. And uh, the second wave uh, is the 20th century wave. Uh, you know where uh, uh, the 19th century feminism, the 18th century feminism, the early feminism, which is more social. Uh, became in the second wave more thoughtful. Uh, uh, it started, you know, using concepts. It started going into the structures, and 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 those structures would be defined in terms that were subtle. So it, she belongs to the second wave feminists, uh, which is in the 20th century. She presented a critique of patriarchy. Now, of course, uh, the critique of patriarchy is common to all uh, feminist versions of thought, but then she is basically fundamentally. Uh, emphasizing the uh, you know uh, coercive role of patriarchy, and uh, patriarchy is not simply the the, the rule of the of, of the father. Uh, it goes beyond that uh, to society, to politics, to ideology, to economics, uh, everywhere. And therefore, her basic emphasis on patriarchy is far-reaching. For her, the sex-based oppression was both political and cultural. You will be wondering again as to how. Uh, patriarchy uh, can be political, and how it can be cultural. Uh, cultural, you might expect, is there because you know uh, in, in a family, uh, whether a joint family or a, or, or a nuclear family, the rule of the, the rule of the, the writ of the father runs. The father decides right from the time of the birth of a woman or a man, uh, the, the children, as to what will be done and what will not be done. So that is uh, a, a very direct kind of patriarchy, but then. Patriarchy is also a tradition, and uh, that tradition, you know, uh, creates uh, values, superiority, inferiority, hierarchy. There is a kind of you know order uh, of preferences uh, in life and in society. And by the time the children have grown up and uh, uh, become you know uh, mature individuals, by that time they have already imbibed the values from home. And um, and in home, of course, expands later to, you know, uh, the school, and then the school later on expands to neighborhood, and so on and so forth. You also call your country. I also call my country my motherland, and my home. So uh, you can see that uh, uh, culture is there all across, from the individual uh, surrounding surroundings of the individual to the surroundings that are of a larger kind. But political, again, uh, I'll, I'll come to it later. But let me tell you. That political ideas, which uh, govern the thinking and the system of a society, uh, have in them at the center the notion of 
the norms of the ideas of patriarchy. So this is a contribution that, that, that she can see, uh, you know, patriarchy structured into uh, the, 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 the politics of, uh, of its time. And uh, that, you know, runs from the, the past to the present and uh, perhaps this will run in, into the future also unless people like Kate Millett make us aware about the presence of these pressures, uh, tell women what they are up against and, and how their, their freedom can be ensured. All that is possible once uh, the woman, the woman, the thinking woman and later on all women come to know about the oppressions that patriarchy exerts oppressions that, 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 that patriarchy uh, you know, uh, does in the uh, social and the, and, and the political context. In this book, Sexual Politics, I will just take up a few points uh, from the chapter, The Theory of Sexual Politics. Uh, I, I wanted to uh, you know, talk about uh, basic ideas and uh, the, the theoretical explanations of them so that you can uh, you know, um, uh, take those ideas uh, in your own head, in your own mind and start reworking the, 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 the pattern of understanding that you have. So uh, in, in the book Sexual Politics there is a chapter and that chapter discusses theory and a few points from there will be picked up by me to explain what exactly she says. We begin a definition of politics and now you know you, you, you start uh, you know, also somewhat smiling as to how politics is defined generally. So she uh, you know takes help from uh, another uh, scholar uh, who did a dictionary uh, you know made a dictionary composed a dictionary and that American that dictionary is called American Heritage Dictionary. It must be a very uh, you know comprehensive kind of an attempt by by a linguistician a scholar of language to explain all possible meanings of a word. Uh, I don't want to go into the nature of the words, but uh, in, in general, you know, uh, we learn knowledge from uh, the words that we are told to hear, where we are told to understand, and later on we are told to express. So what does politics mean according to this dictionary? So I, I pick up this, this, this small description of, of that and uh, let you know as to what it is. Methods or tactics involved in managing a state or government. Now, see, every word is packed with uh, in, a number of associations. So, politics is a method and a tactic. Methods mean that, that, that you adopt certain ways so that, you know, people, before they understand, uh, know that they are in the grip of a method which, which the person is uh, uh, using in order to make you understand. So, politics, you know, is a method. Second, it's a tactic. Now, tactic is a, is a very clever kind of a step. A tactic uh, is not exactly truth. It may, be, it may be taking you towards the truth, but because it's a tactic, so it might be taking you away from the truth also. Because in politics, there's no false or, 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 or true. All that is there is in the context. And in the context, certain things have to be emphasized. So, uh, uh, you can see that uh, already uh, the, the feminism has entered our discussion because if there are patriarchal people influencing and controlling feminist thought, then they will be using methods and tactics to do it. So, these methods and tactics are involved in politics in managing a state. They, they have to manage a state and a government. So, is a state managed and govern, governed? This is the question I am posing to you and to myself. And I say we never thought about a state being managed or a government being managed by tactics and methods. If that is the case, then we have to be very careful about the policies that the state uh, wants to, needs to or does make popular uh, in, in a system, in a society. So it's a, it's a, uh, it's a word, you know, you know which, which, is, uh, which has a, a large number of things hidden inside it and therefore uh, we, we, we will have to uh, you know, use such a definition of uh, politics in order to understand the sexual politics that, uh, you know, uh, Kate Millett uh, uses for discussion uh, in this particular book. <coughs> the discussion is divided into eight subheads by the uh, thinker, by the writer. First is ideological. What is ideological? There is a chain of ideas. They are connected with, with one another. And finally, they, uh, you know, uh, form an outlook. That, that outlook you, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, adopt uh, in, in your mind from that chain of ideas which are connected with each other and uh, that, you know, works against 
uh, the, the, the women uh, in the case of the, the, the present societies because ideologically women are always under attack. Always, you know, there is a chain of ideas which wants to bind them, uh, you know, uh, in, in, into it and compels them to think in a particular uh, way and, and, and along certain lines. So you can imagine that the world at large in uh, different societies is working tactics, is, is using tactics in order to influence the thinking of women and uh, uh, that is done ideologically. So you, whatever you say, there is an opinion uh, you know, ingrained in it. Uh, what, what, whatever you uh, sing, whatever you, whatever you dance about, whatever rituals you observe, all those things actually strengthen the ideological grip uh, of, of, of the system uh, on, uh, on, on your minds. And, and that grip, in fact, uh, you know, is, is the negative aspect of uh, the atmosphere in which women are compelled to live, biological. Uh, biology, you know, has, has to be kept in mind in, in the case of uh, uh, sex. Sex means uh, the, the woman, the, the, the female. And uh, biology is important. But biology does not say that women are inferior or, or, or men are superior or, or even that um, women are superior and men are inferior. Biology should be understood for the facts, for the facts that there are. Human beings are born through the biological act. And when they are born, they don't know whether they are men or women because uh, as, as Simone de Beauvoir, uh, you know, many years before uh, 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 Kate Millett said very clearly, uh, very loudly that uh, women are not born, they are made. And if they are made, then they are not biological beings, then they are actually social beings. So that's the meaning and uh, that is explained in some detail here that biologically speaking, men and women are equal. Uh, nature has the equal part to play uh, in the making of uh, men or women, males or females, and that should be gone into at the level of biology. So, un uh, read biology, uh, see the sexual act, think of the, the child being born, uh, and, and uh, uh, see the uh, working of the mind, the working of the heart, the working of the other vital organs, the, 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 the demands on food, the demands on nourishment. The, 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 uh, the role of movement, the role of playing, all, all those things, that is biological. And biologically speaking, uh, there is no difference between uh, the male and the female. Third is sociological. Now, this is where the crux lies. Uh, I will be taking it up in some detail. The, the first three or four, uh, the first three I will take up in some detail. But I tell you that a woman is made by psychological pressure, uh, sociological pressures. And fourth is class. Now, class is a very, uh, you know, uh, uh, important category, but a very, uh, you know, dubious category also, because uh, class says something about uh, human effort, human labor, uh, class, uh, uh, and if human labor is involved, then all of us are laboring uh, in, in life generally, and uh, that, that labor is used, uh, equal. But then sometimes hierarchy, uh, somebody is superior and somebody is lower and there is an order which is hierarchical in nature uh, that you know starts uh, impacting the idea of the class also. So class is subsumed by hierarchy uh, in, in a society. So these are the four chapters and then there are four other chapters and uh, th th those four chapters uh, would be uh, uh, like this. Uh, <coughs> Uh, first is the ideological, biological, sociological and class, this, this we have discussed. Then the uh, next one is the fifth one, economic and educational. Does that have an, an impact on women uh, and the, the females? Economic, <coughs> how much uh, money is spent, how, much, how many resources, how much of resource is, is being expended uh, on the development and growth of the woman and educational, what she is taught, what, what she is asked to believe in. Uh, what kind of, uh, you know, uh, behavior she, she is supposed to, uh, you know, um, show uh, in, in the school, uh, in the college and, and in the academy in general. So all these things are going to leave their you know, traces uh, on, on the minds of uh, women and the females. Force. Now, force can be of different kinds. Uh, there, there is a social force. Without seeing it, uh, you, you, you can feel the impact of force. 
uh, sometimes a, a stare is, is good enough to may make you understand uh, what is needed of you, what is wanted of you, what is expected of you. Then anthropological, anthropological is, is, is old, you know, myth and religion. These are also important in the case of understanding the, the, the force and the, um, the nature of oppression of women. And the last is psychological, that finally the woman is psychological governed also. Now the last is really uh, uh, a very dangerous, uh, appear, uh, it appears to be a very dangerous kind of weapon uh, in, in the hands of, uh, you know, people. Uh, I think it's, uh, I'd be using uh, the method a bit uh, more, uh, you know, focused manner now in order to uh, make you, so we, we, were, we are at the uh, psychological thing at, at the moment and then we go to the next point. <coughs> Stoller is a thinker and is quoted by Kate Millett to say, sex is biological, which, which, which I have already explained to you, uh, uh, biology, the body, the, 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 the nature uh, in, in, in the human personality, that is sex. Gender is psychological. You think you are a man, you, are, you think you are a woman. And if you think as a man and you think as a woman, then this is psychological. This has been actually put into your head, put into your mind. That's why you start thinking as a woman or man. So gender is psychological and that is dangerous. So uh, there, there can be a question in your exam uh, where you can be asked about the difference between sex and gender. And uh, I would say if you say that sex is natural and gender is psychological, then that will be the correct answer. But you will have to explain how gender is psychological. So, you know, uh, all of us know that... Uh, uh, a, a girl is dressed in a particular manner, a girl is kept inside the home, a, a girl is uh, supposed to behave uh, sweetly, uh, uh, you know, uh, she, she has to be gentle and all those qualities. She may not be gentle. Why should a human, human being be always gentle? But then women are supposed to be gentle, gentle or cultural. Cultural means cultural norms of obedience, norms of uh, agreeing with whatever uh, is, is being said to the woman rather than having biological connotations. So uh, I'm using these words, gender uh, and, and sex, uh, as additionally important for us because the difference is made by something that is present in the society itself. So uh, when I say that gender is psychological or cultural, then I'm talking about uh, those particular centers of power in society, you know, which, which uh, you know, control uh, that society and, and tell themselves and, and the women that this is what is expected of them. So if uh, uh, you are expected to think in a particular manner, if you are expected to follow certain cultural norms by order of the, of the, of the superior authority, then uh, you know, go, uh, going by your own instincts, then the connotations are uh, uh, changed from biological to psychological and gender. And this is the basic principle uh, that, that governs the discussion of this book. <coughs> if the proper terms for sex are male and female, this is the other quotation, if the proper terms for sex are male and female, the corresponding terms for gender are masculine and feminine. See the words? Uh, uh, there is a male and there is a female. Uh, this, this, this is the actual and the correct, the right category. Somebody is, a, is born a male and somebody, somebody is, a, is born a female. But see the, how the words, you know, start playing with the, the roles of uh, women and men. The corresponding terms for gender, uh, you now the true, true is male and female. But the gender uh, truth is masculine and feminine. So you have to be, you, you have to be like a man. Now male is fine, but why man like? Uh, female is fine, but why woman like? So uh, you have to behave like a man and uh, somebody else, the girl has to behave like a woman. Now that is there, that's where something else uh, you know, uh, is into the picture and that is to be kept in mind. So these latter, uh, the, the uh, masculine and feminine, uh, they will be uh, discussed uh, uh, in, in the uh, second part of the discussion. And uh, we, uh, you know, uh, just say that uh, the uh, words have to be taken uh, seriously uh, by, by us 
because uh, the some hidden shades of meaning are there uh, behind them and uh, for instance i i would not i wouldn't have uh, understood this thing so very clearly uh, if i had not read uh, the, this this particular chapter where the male is all right but masculine is wrong female is all right but feminine is wrong and this wrong part of thing comes from certain power centers in society and we should be conscious of them i hope uh, friends uh, you have uh, uh, seen these points as uh, informing your mind and and and, and uh, becoming useful and uh, uh, please go over them and uh, see you know uh, the things around you in the light of what has been said in this lecture thank you